Warning, the following episode describes how to make capsaicin extract. Pure capsaicin is extremely dangerous and could have Scoville heat units scorching up to 16 million. User discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Farmer George. I'm excited to share with you my most anticipated episode to date. Today I teach you something that I've really not seen on YouTube or the internet for that matter. I'm going to teach you how to make semi-pure capsaicin extract. You heard it right. Semi-pure capsaicin extract. Capsaicin is the compound that makes pepper spicy. And this is not a hard method either. I'm going to show you how to make this stuff using materials found at your house or that you can go buy at your local store. And be sure to stay tuned to the end because like with all my creations, despite my better judgment sometimes, I always do a taste test. So sit back, enjoy the process, and enjoy watching me sweat at the end of it all. Let's go see how it's done. For these next steps, you're gonna need your dried peppers. And I went ahead and I skipped the step on how to dry these. But basically I took, I don't know, maybe 150 peppers, cut them in halves, and put them on the dehydrator for uh, six hours at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna put these peppers into this blender, get it into as fine of a powder as you possibly can. Uh, one thing also <laughs> to remember is when you take the lid off of the blender, pepper dust could be in the air, so be careful not to breathe directly over your, your blender because that would irritate your nose, eyes, uh, lungs, everything. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pour the first batch of powder into this mason jar, grind up the second batch, and then I'm gonna grind it all together again in one final, one final batch. All right, so that was the second batch of peppers. Now, I'm gonna pour back the first one back into my blender. And I'm just gonna let this blender rip, do its thing. So what you can also do is just take the wire strainer and strain this powder out. And just get all the fine stuff in there. And then I'll put the stuff that's left over in the strainer back in the blender. So here's the fine powder that I strained through my strainer and I'm going to put this stuff, it's mostly seed, back into the blender and see if I can get a little bit more finer powder out of this. So this is about the remainder I got out of the, uh, the bigger chunks. I'm going to take what's in the strainer now and just uh, keep it for you know pepper flakes and spice up my food. And then I'm going to put this pepper into this mason jar and then I'm clean up for a second. So this is about 150 dried super hot peppers. I put it in the sterilized mason jar. You can see how I sterilize jars in my how to make ghost pepper jelly recipe. I show you how to do that there. Um, so the next step is to take your mason jar and you're gonna take 95% grain alcohol and you're gonna pour it about an inch, I would say, over the level of pepper powder you have. So I washed my lid in the rim with soap and water. I'm just gonna put that on top and uh, there you have it. So give it a, a nice shake, get it all in there incorporated and mixed up and uh, shake it about twice daily for about a week. And we'll check on this in a week. All right, everybody, so today is November 7th, so it's been nine days since we've put the alcohol with the pepper powder, and I've been shaking it once or twice a day. The important thing is, the day before you decide to take off this layer, you have to let it sit for 24 hours. And I want to show you the difference. I started with the light off, but I want to show you how beautiful this is and how clear it is. So. What we have here is, this is called the natant portion of the, the mixture. And down here, all the pepper powder, that's called the pellet. So what I'm gonna show you today is I'm gonna take the first batch of the super natant and I'm gonna transfer it into a little glass jar. And I'm using glass just in case the, um, 
the alcohol would take anything from the plastic into our solution, which we don't want. So excuse me if I block the shot for a second, but I'm taking my, um, this is my syringe that I got. You can get them on Amazon and I got it. I just took it out of this package. So it's completely sterilized. You have to be very careful not to get the pellet from the bottom. So this is a super delicate process. So far so good. I got about, this is two teaspoons, um, 10 milliliter um, of supernate in here. And I'm gonna just transfer it into this little glass jar. And I'm gonna do it again because I got, I have some space before I get close to the pellet. So you wanna repeat this process um, a few more times until you get too close to that pellet la layer, but you see this is all, there, there isn't any powder or pellet here um, in this. And I'm gonna continue to, to get as much as I can out of here. And then what I'll do with the remaining um, pellet in here, just to extract a little bit more, I'm gonna put more green alcohol in there, shake it up and repeat the process while um, I begin to uh, evaporate the alcohol from here. So as you can see, the final results show just pure alcohol and hopefully capsaicin in my little glass jar. And then I still have some super natant in this, in this big jar here. And I'm gonna add more alcohol in here, probably, um, I don't know, probably up to this line right here, just as much as I took out. So I'll probably put another 100 milliliters of 90% alcohol in here give it a nice shake and, and kind of go through the process again. Meanwhile, I'm going to take this one and <clears throat> I'm going to just cover it with a coffee filter, just like that, so that no you know, dust or debris can get into it. I did two solutions and I just want to illustrate where I have them in my house just so no one knocks them out. This is on top of a very tall bookcase um, and I'm just going to let these evaporate um, over the days and we'll see. I'll just check every day, but I got one there and then I got the second one here. We'll see in a few days. Um, I'm gonna check every day the level of the, the alcohol, uh, what we're left with. Okay, everybody, so just wanted to give you an update. This is about three weeks in the making. See that dark, the dark layer? That's the capsaicin right there. So I can easily extract kind of what I did out of the, the big mason jar. I'm gonna combine these into one now so that I can get more uh, of the extract in one go and uh, not get any of the alcohol when I do take that final syringe and suck the, uh, the extract out. So very carefully, I'm gonna swirl this one all together and then I'm gonna pour it just like that. And you can see that there's, wow, I can smell it. It's crazy hot. I can smell it from here. I'm probably like a foot away. Um, but you can see all that, the residue along the side right here. That's, you know, some of the extract that's oil and it's taken a while to come down. You know what, I'm gonna take some alcohol and I'm gonna pour it in here, swish it around a little bit and pour it in here. Okay, so I got my 95% uh, al alcohol here pour just a tad. Basically at this stage, I just wanna get all that pepper extract off the these walls. See it's all off the jar. I'm gonna let this one sit a few more days. All right, everybody, today is Monday, December 17th, and it's been a month <laughs> and 10 days since we first put the first Super Nathan in these uh, little jars here. You're probably thinking, I thought we combined the two jars in the previous scene. You're right, we did. But I wanted to get more extract, so I pulled more of the Super Natan out of the original large mason jar and transferred it into the other small jar. I was hoping to maximize the amount of extract. So now, let's get back to the two jars once again. Today we're gonna to combine the two jars because we have successfully created pretty much semi-pure capsaicin extract. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my syringe here, 
I'm going to carefully collect as much of this extract as possible from both little jars. And I can smell it. It smells super hot. And some of this is already like pretty, pretty congealed. It's like almost like a, a thick, oily, sappy substance. This one is really like, it's like almost like a, you see it dripping? It's very viscous. It's almost like a syrup. It moves just like molasses almost. I'm gonna go get a little plastic spoon stirrer thing and try to get as much of this extract out of the yeast as possible. Yeah, so uh, basically what I'm gonna do is just kind of ladle this stuff out. This is just a little coffee stir. Man, I didn't know it was gonna be this thick, it's crazy. I'm trying not to, to fling this up because if I get this in my eye or on anything, it's gonna just burn. It's almost like a paint. This is the kind of paint the devil uses. Maybe that's what I'll call it. Devil's paint. I think I'll call it devil's molasses. That's got a cool ring to it. Farmer George's devil's molasses. All right, unfortunately, I don't think I can get any more than what I have in here. Um, but I'm gonna put the top on because actually I don't want any more of the alcohol to um, evaporate out because um, I kind of want to have this in a more liquid state and um, The more the alcohol evaporates uh, The the thicker and more viscous it becomes so this is the final product. Let's go taste it Yeah, so it's a long process and then again. This is what the final product looks like I have it in a, an airtight jar here so that no more of the alcohol um, kind of gets out of there so it doesn't become too um, molasses-like. And uh, that's the name of uh, my extract here. It's me called Devil's Molasses. So Farmer George's Devil's Molasses, one million dollars a jar. <laughs> I'm kidding. I said I would taste it. And uh, I'm just taking this jar with this uh, coffee stirrer that we were we were just using to get it off and there's quite a bit of uh, extract on there I would say uh, three maybe five drops I'm just gonna go for it this is gonna suck I'm just gonna put it on my tongue I'm not gonna use my lips because I don't want my lips to be burning the entire day I haven't warmed up for this at all no hot foods today, no alcohol, here we go. Uh, just a couple of drops. Immediately, oh, it just goes straight to the back of your throat. It's like fire is all over my tongue. I'm getting a little bit of the saliva right now. It tastes like a pepper. I mean, you saw all the peppers I used in there. It's not going to the back of my throat. It's now on the roof, roof of my mouth. It's making my, my throat warm. It's, it's instant. It's an instant uh, kick to the face. It's not a slow burn. Um, my heart rate's increasing. Uh, I'm starting to sweat. <clears throat> really burning the roof of my mouth. I'm gonna go for a little bit more. I'm gonna switch it around. <coughs> Bad idea. <coughs> Holy. Yeah, this is the real <coughs> This is what I was expecting. I got a burn all the way down my throat. Uh, a little tear. Uh, excuse me. 
<clears throat> yeah, this isn't anything to mess with. But <clears throat> it's almost got a fruity flavor. Like a sweetness to it. Not floral, not earthy. <clears throat> gonna be here for a while it's just on my tongue man I'm not gonna stay here and, and have you watch me suffer through this um, this stuff is wild <clears throat> only a couple drops it felt it feels like I ate a super hot pepper with a couple drops that's insane um, so if you want to make this, it's possible. It takes about, you know, almost a month and a half if you want to do it slow, the slow method. I bet you can boil it off and get it faster, but it might take back some of that heat, but honestly, who cares? There's so much heat in this. This will be good in any hot sauces that you want to be super hot. Even if you do, like, <clears throat> a fermented hot sauce or something, it hasn't come out to the level that you want, or if you have a cooked, if you cook your peppers. Oh, a couple of drops of this really intensifies the heat without much flavor. It gives it a little sweetness, but I'm sure that won't come through um, with all the other flavors in your hot sauces. Okay, I think it's going away a little bit. It's still on the roof of my mouth. I'm still salivating, but man, that was crazy. I thought it was gonna be a little worse, but I guess that was only a few drops, so maybe, maybe that's just what I should have expected. I can't imagine like a spoonful of that. Whew. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you have any tips, if you've ever done this in the past and you've had a success with it, I'd love to know how you created Pure Capsaicin. If not, if you're sick of making powders, you have a ton of peppers and you don't know what to do, this is a great way to use a ton of peppers. And, um, you know, it takes a lot of time, but if, if you don't want to make, if you don't want to spend the time and make a nice hot sauce, just dry these peppers up, grind them up, and do what I did in the video. And just, you got, all you got to do is wait. And then you got a little, uh, little jar of pure evil. <laughs> anyway, I'm Farmer George. Thanks for watching. Let's share and grow together. See you next time.